Hello and welcome to Lord of the Board. My name is Sam Smith and today we are going to be doing an overview and give some strategy tips for Beowulf in the unmatched set Little Red Riding Hood versus Beowulf. Now this was one of the first sets that I really started to love in Unmatched. And I did love Cobble and Fog. I mean, I did like, okay, look, I love all the sets, but this was like the first set where I completely vibed with both characters. Beowulf and, and Little Red Riding Hood are some of my favorite characters in this game, period. And I'm so excited to start you know, this series on this set in particular. But first, let me just talk about our sponsor of today, which is going to be Restoration Games, the creators of Unmatched. So if you haven't visited their website, if you haven't played Unmatched before, what are you doing? Play Unmatched and also go visit the website, link in the description down below. But with that, we're gonna go ahead and move forward with this video like we do all of them. We're gonna be going through all of the cards. I'm going to be explaining to you the strategies of the character within that whole time period. And then at the end, I'm gonna go ahead and give you kind of the main strategy of the deck and how to operate and run this character. So without further ado, let's go ahead and dive right in to Beowulf's stats. Oh my gosh. I'm not sponsored by LaCroix, but LaCroix, if you ever decide to watch a board game video on YouTube in this vast space of many other possibly better sponsorship options, you should definitely consider me. I would appreciate it. Alrighty, so let's go ahead and talk about Beowulf. He has got 17 health. He is a two move hero. He is a melee fighter. We've also got Wiglaf, who is also melee and he has nine health. So both of them are pretty high up there in the health department. This is a pretty good health pool considering some of the other options out there. Now, the special ability of Beowulf is one that I've wanted to see in this game for quite a while, and that is kind of using an alternate resource in the game. So Beowulf has these rage tokens. Now you can have a maximum of three at any given time, and you're going to be starting off the game with just one of these. Now, whenever Beowulf is dealt damage, he's going to go ahead and gain a new rage token but if he already has up to three he cannot gain any more than three so optimizing your play with these rage tokens is going to really determine how well you do with Beowulf when you use them with your cards when you don't use them this is all going to be some determining factors when you play as this character so with that being said let's go ahead and dive right in to Beowulf's attack cards We've got the Ancient Heirloom, which is a three value attack card for Beowulf only. This has one boost value, and it says that this card's effects cannot be canceled. I'll talk about that in a second, but it makes me hyped. It also says that during combat, you may spend two rage tokens to make this card's value five instead, essentially just boosting it by two. You may also spend one rage to boost this card. So you can effectively do both of these effects. And this is a really great card. It's probably the best card in Beowulf's deck. So we're just starting right out of the gate. This is an extremely powerful card. One, not being able to be canceled means that you can attack with no fear of this not coming through. Therefore, your opponent either has to, one, have a very strong defense card in mind, or even better, they play a feint and it doesn't matter. So you've sucked up one of their feints and you get in a ton of damage as Beowulf. This card is incredibly good. In fact, I would never use this card unless I'm able to boost a card with it because that is effectively going to do more damage. And I think that if you can pop off both effects, that's even better. So Sometimes I would say that maybe hanging on to rage from a previous turn, if you don't find a good opportunity to use it then, could actually be worth waiting in order to get a full rage attack of this card the next turn. So my advice would probably be to spend one rage the turn previous, hoping to get attacked in between going up to three rage and then using this card on that turn. 
And the next card is also a three attack value card called No Context Expecteth. And this is a three boost value card. It says that after combat, if you attacked a sidekick and won the combat, you may spend three rage to defeat that sidekick. Now, this card is kind of, it gives me vibes of like, it seems super powerful, but it will rarely ever work. Three attack value is not that great. At the end of the day, this is not going to be able to defeat many of the combats against a sidekick. It's possible, and it would be really great if it did, but your opponent's definitely going to know when you're trying to get this to work because you're gonna have probably three rage already, and you're gonna be attacking your sidekick with Beowulf. I'm sure they're always going to know that, okay, wait, I've gotta watch out for no contest expected. Now, since this is not going to be used very often for that ability and also since some sidekicks uh, are just kind of garbage like you would never want to do this to the porter <laughs> i mean maybe you would maybe you would but probably don't um i actually like to use this card as a boost for the ancient heirloom and you've got two of these in the deck so this gives you two options to get full power out of that ancient heirloom and i truly believe that this is going to be a better use for this card than actually trying to make it work against a sidekick. And then we've got the two value attack card, Epic Poem. This also has a two boost value and it says immediately gain one rage. And then during combat, this card's value is plus one for each rage you have. So you're, it's pretty much a three attack card unless it's fainted um, because you're gaining that rage token immediately, right? And so during combat, since you're not actually spending the rage, this card is extremely economic. One, you're gaining rage. Two, you're not spending any rage. And you can deal a maximum of five damage, which is pretty good. The thing is, is that keeping the three rage turn to turn is going to be a little difficult. And so what I would probably do is never use this card unless you actually gain that rage, because otherwise, why would you use it, right? So. I'd probably plan it out to where you're at two rage and then you can use this. Obviously that's going to be the best moment to do it. However, you can't really control when you're gaining rage because you know, you're know you gaining rage when your opponent attacks you. So what I would do is on the turn previous that you're planning to use the epic poem, you can spend down your rage but leave one rage in your supply. That way you can kind of assume that you'll take a hit between your turns, so then you'll be at two rage, and then you can use Epic Poem to get that third rage. That's probably the the best and like cleanest way to get this to pop off at the full three and still be kind of sneaky about it. But all in all, I actually love this card. I think it's a very powerful attack card in uh, Beowulf's deck, and it's definitely one that you, that you do have to do a little bit of planning, but if you do, it's super economic and can deal some good damage. And now we're going to move on to the versatile card that Beowulf has. This is going to be a one value versatile card called the War King. This has a three boost value. Now this card says that during combat you can spend any amount of rage and this value is plus two for each rage token spent. So essentially you spend one rage and this is a three value card. You spend two and it's five. You spend three and it's seven. I would probably minimum spend two with this card, but it really depends on what you're up against. If it gets fainted, obviously, you don't even have to worry about that decision. It's not hard. You've just failed. However, if it's not fainted, you can play this to whatever your opponent has. So if you use it defensively, you can just spend rage to get up to the amount that you need to not take any damage. If you're using it offensively, you can spend rage up to make sure that you're dealing damage. And I would do that, but I would probably say you don't really want to engage in combat unless you have at least two rage, because a three value card is just not that great and will not come in handy. So two and up in order to use this, and I would probably say it's a little bit better on the defense than it is on the offense, because like I always like to say, you know, a five defense is a lot better than a five offense. However, a seven offense is a lot better than a seven defense. Huh. So really, it's a very versatile card. This can be used 
in a lot of different circumstances and it's very very powerful in the deck. You even might be able to slide one of these though as a boost for the Ancient Heirloom since you have three copies in your deck. And then we've got one of my personal favorite defense cards in the game. This is going to be the Equal of Grendel. This is a three value defense only card with one boost. And it says that immediately you may spend two rage to deal damage to the opposing fighter equal to the printed value of their card. This has an extreme amount of potential and it will make your opponent always be just a little bit afraid to do some heavy attacks on you. But it is only the printed value, so you're not able to get any of their bonuses if they're using anything to make their attack more strong. It's only going to gain the printed value of your opponent's card. Now, obviously when you're using this, it's going to be situational as to how much rage you have, but you are going to want to obviously have the two rage ready just in case you can deal a super powerful attack to your opponent when they least expect it, when they're the ones attacking. It is, it is a very, very good feeling. And also the three shield is very powerful as well. You're going to be able to soak up most heavy attacks. Now moving on to Beowulf's scheme cards, we've got Vigor and Courage. This has a two boost value and it says to choose an opponent, they discard one random card and then you gain rage equal to its boost value. So likely you're going to be getting on average probably only one rage, but it's possible that you get two and it's extremely unlikely that you're gonna get three and there really isn't a bad or good time to use this card. It could literally be used whenever. There's no real way to know what cards they have and what values they have. You can, you can kind of try and guess based on what cards they've already played. You can know what cards they have left in their deck and maybe you can kind of play it, but, but really this is just random and it's a good way to just gain a rage if you absolutely need it. This is pretty good if you need to set up for the next turn. If you're afraid that you won't be able to gain enough rage for an ability that you need to use next turn, or if you somehow are magically already in position, you could use this and then use a card that needed two rage or three rage or something or other. So there are some options with this, but there's really no clear time to use it. It's just kind of a card that you can use to gain a rage when you need it, right? And then we've got Beowulf's Golden Drinking Horn. This is his other scheme card. This has a three boost value. And this says that you can spend any amount of rage to choose a different effect for each rage spent. So you can't use the same ability twice. So we've got draw two cards, move Beowulf up to four spaces, or Beowulf recovers two health. Now the obvious best choice is going to be recovering two health. You're gonna to wanna to always use that ability. The other two, it's dependent on the situation. I would say that drawing two cards is a little better personally, just because I like to have options. The movement, you can discard cards and boost your movement. Um, so it's kind, of, it's kind of hard to figure out which one's really the better option because yes, you're drawing cards, that's good. You're gaining card draw, but by using the movement, you're not spending a card to boost movement maybe. So it's really dependent on the situation as a whole. Do you need to get somewhere that your measly two move cannot make it this turn? If so, that's a perfect second option. If not, then drawing two cards is obviously still a really good effect. There are There is another way to draw cards in Beowulf's deck, which we're going to get to. So it's not the end of the world if you don't draw cards using this ability. And now moving on to Wiggloff's card, we've got the three value attack card hot for the battle. This has a three boost value and it says that after combat, Wiggloff may swap spaces with Beowulf. Now this is a really cool ability, but its attack is just pretty low. Three is just not good as an attack. So you're gonna wanna probably be using this for its ability. Now, when do you use this for its ability is a good question because it's kind of tricky. It can be used to essentially surprise your opponent, get Beowulf in a position that they do not expect to be at. You could essentially move in with Wiggloff, attack with this card, and then kind of port in Beowulf to kind of be the defense or the next opponent for that player. 
or you could kind of do the opposite where if, if Beowulf is in a place where you don't want him to be, you can have Wiglaf go and attack a sidekick and port Beowulf back to safety. So there are definite uses for this card, but it's definitely not a good attack card in the way of an attack card. It's mostly a good utility card that can be used in certain niche times. And another use for it could also just be that you discard it with use of the Ancient Heirloom. And honestly, that might just be a better use for it anyways, because that's definitely going to be more consistent of a use. All in all, an okay card. It could be better. I wish it was better. Um, but let's talk about Wiglaf's uh, Scheme card. This is going to be Remnant of Valor. This has a two boost value, and this says that Wiglaf deals one damage to each adjacent fighter. If Beowulf was dealt damage this way, you gain an action. This can be a super powerful card against characters that have one HP sidekicks like Medusa or maybe Muldoon. This can be very, very powerful to just wipe them out if you can get in the right position. You could always move Wiglaf into position and then use this card. But on another factor, I like to have this to be a little rage fueler for Beowulf. If you hit Beowulf, you get one rage and you also get an additional action. And now we are moving to the cards that can be used by either Wiglaf or by Beowulf, starting with Fatal Struggle. This is a four value attack card with a two boost value, which says that after combat, if you won the combat, you can draw two cards. However, if you lost the combat, your opponent draws two cards. So this is a real gamble because it can be extremely good or it can be extremely bad. You're losing a combat and your opponent draws two cards. So what are the ways that we can mitigate this? What are the ways that we can exploit this ability and make it to where it's okay or decent at least, or even just worth it to take that risk? I found that there's a couple of ways. You can try to use this when a couple of your opponent's more common defense cards have already been played. Um, you could try to target the sidekick as a lot of times players will not use as good of defense cards with their sidekicks as they will with their main hero. Or maybe if your opponent's hand is full, you can give them an overflow of cards. That way they're going to have to discard down if they're not able to play enough cards on their turn. So depending on how many times this actually works, the golden drinking horn might be just the better option for card draw. But if this does work, then the golden drinking horn can be used for other things, essentially. And now we've got the basic cards in Beowulf's deck. He only has two. He's got Faint and Skirmish. He's got three copies of each. There's a video that I linked down below talking all about how to use faint cards. It's going to be the same with Beowulf. There's no real difference here. But let's talk a little bit about Skirmish because this is a four value versatile card with one boost value. This says that after combat, if you won the combat, move one of the fighters in combat up to two spaces. And let's just think about this for a second here. Wiglaf, he has no defense cards. This is going to be a good defense card for Wiglaf. This could also be a good defense card for Beowulf as if you haven't been counting the cards yet, there just isn't that many defense cards that either of these characters can really use. But all in all, Beowulf is a lot more protected with those defense only specific cards and Wiglaf just doesn't have any. So this can be a very good way to shield Wiglaf throughout the game and you've got three of them. This is not a good boost card. This only is one boost. So really this is its only use. You could use it as an attack card, but it's just a lot better as a defense card. But that is it for all of the cards in Beowulf's deck. So how exactly do you play Beowulf's deck? And what are some of the things that you can do to play him most effectively? I would say that always making sure that you have available rage to gain is a very important concept with this character. If you're already at max three rage and it ends your turn, your opponent's not going to fear attacking you because you're not going to be gaining any more rage. So ending your turn with at least two rage, that way your opponent is a little bit more hesitant to give you one. That's going to be a better play with this character. If there is a hero that you're going up against that has an ability that just deals automatic damage, you can exploit that by positioning 
Beowulf in the zone or wherever he needs to be in order to just automatically gain that rage. For example, using Medusa's ability against her in order to gain some rage for only one damage. Another concept is that Beowulf is very heavy on attack cards, but really, really low on defense cards. So playing this character can be a little tricky and you're going to want to position him close enough to deal heavy damage, but also be far enough to where you're not getting attacked. This is why Beowulf has 17 health, because he is going to be taking a beating with that slow movement, but he needs to be close in order to deal enough damage in order to win. So you have to utilize those rage tokens in order to even have a chance to win as this character. If you're able to utilize the rage tokens properly, you can defeat your opponent before having to use those defense cards in your deck. And so all in all, Beowulf is all about utilizing the second economy with those rage tokens and making sure that you're using each and every one of the cards properly in that moment. How much rage am I going to spend this turn? How much rage do I need for my next cards to play on my next turn? But that is it for my guide on Beowulf. Thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Beowulf is my favorite character in this game right now. I just love how puzzling he is, how difficult it is to really play effectively. But when you do, it is such a rewarding experience. The character is just so well designed. This is just by far my favorite set. It's what convinced me to do this series. So if you haven't already, please turn on the bell notification to be notified when my next video comes out. And if you're not already subscribed, definitely consider subscribing. And also comment down below, what's your favorite unmatched character and why? Thank you so much, friends. Let's go ahead and drop the beat.